All right, so good afternoon, everyone. My name is Karen. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And I do currently serve as the Associate Director for Student Involvement. I am here today with a phenomenal student leader by the name of Andre Tompkins. Um, they are here to talk a little bit about um, the importance of self-advocacy. Um, we have been very fortunate enough for Andre putting in a lot of work on this presentation and agreeing to participate in one of our many virtual leadership series. Um, so without further ado, I am going to hand it off to Andre. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you so much for coming. My name is Andre, pronouns they, them. She, um, I'm so excited to do this. So, um, all right, let's get let's get started. Ooh. Okay, there we go. So, what I wanted to talk to you about is self advocacy. So, what is self advocacy? It's the I have, I have two definitions. So, it's the action of re rep representing oneself or one's views or interests or a skill that enables individuals to understand their strengths, weaknesses, know what they need to succeed and communicate that to other people. So in essence, a way to uh, speak up for yourself and a way to take a, take a stand and to make change. Um, there's also three parts of self-advocacy, um, knowing yourself, knowing your needs and knowing how to get what you need. And we're gonna touch on that in a little bit. So why is self-advocacy important? It's important to learn self-advocacy skills because it helps you decide what you want and what is possible for you to expect. And when you have good self-advocacy skills, you can have more control and make life decisions that are best for you. Self-advocacy helps you to helps you to empower yourself, helps you to speak up for yourself and make decisions about your life and helps you to make goals on those decisions. So that's why self-advocacy is very important because you, you are your best, you know you. So, um, so um, a little history on self-advocacy. Um, the term was coined during the rise of the social and civil rights movements during the 1960s and 70s, um, such as the disability, disability rights movement, the gay rights movement, the civil rights movement and more. And um, even though self-advocacy is a term used in, on the political spectrum and social movements, my question was, how can we use um, self-advocacy beyond the political spectrum? All right, so I, I was able to research um, these different types of things. Um, so self-advocacy, Self-advocacy, excuse me, self-advocacy can be used in every aspect of your life, going beyond the social and political spectrum. You can use it at home, at work, at school, at a hospital, at a doctor's office, um, at a store, on a bus. And if you're not happy with the way something is done, then it's up to you, then it's up to you to help change, change it. And I love this quote at the bottom. It says, nobody else knows knows how you feel or what you think. You need to tell people if you're not happy or want something to change. So once again, it's all up to you to make the change happen. Um, so the three parts of self-advocacy is knowing yourself, because again, you know, you know you best, and knowing what you need. So a prime example is, let's say you have, um, you're struggling in school. Um, and you need accommodations. So you can email, um, it, you can email a person in charge of accommodations and that's one way to self-advocate for yourself. And then the last one is to knowing how to get what you need. Information is important because without information, you may not know how to get the accommodations that you need or any other information to help you self-advocate for yourself. So when is self-advocacy useful? It can, it's useful when you wanna be listened to, when you're being assessed, when you're making a complaint or when you're developing or reviewing a care plan. So with that being said, it's scenario time. I'm not just sitting here talking. We're just gonna do some, uh, put our skills to the test. 
So um, Karen, are we, should we do breakout rooms or uh, should we just? We could just keep everyone in the main, keep main room. Keep everyone in the main room? Okay. Sure. All right, so our first scenario. Um, so Jackie knows that she has a problem if she does not sit towards the front of the room. Her teacher has given her a seat in the back of the room and it's difficult for her to see. How does she advocate for herself in a mature and socially acceptable way? So I can, um, um, we can just take five minutes to just think and discuss. And I may be calling on some people if you don't answer, just so you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I can start this. Okay. Uh, I'd say, you know, tell, she should tell her teacher uh, why she needs to be in the front. And uh, hopefully he understands. And I don't under, like, and speaking up, especially if you want to sit in the front of the class, I don't think any teacher is going to deny you that. Uh, but I understand how, you know, there's the level of, uh, uh, what's it called, uh, seniority or whatever, uh, to where it, it is pretty hard to actually, like, maybe there's, maybe there's an actual reason why the teacher sat you in, in the back, and who are you to question the teacher? Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. Anyone else have any ideas, examples? Are we speaker from the perspective of Jackie talking to the teacher? Yes. Okay, I think that um, Jackie should just wait, perhaps wait until after this class period because um, you maybe don't want to interrupt the teacher uh, when, they, when she begins or she or he uh, begins teaching. But um, I think that it's a good idea for Jackie to approach the teacher after class is over, uh, discuss, hey, I learned better when I sit in the front of the class. Uh, you put me in the back, which I know you probably didn't mean any malice behind, but I will do best when I'm in this position. All right. Great answer. Any Anyone else Would like to say anything else? Before we move on? I guess I'll speak from the perspective of the teacher, <laughs> since um, I think that that's kind of important to think about. And, you know, I, I obviously can't speak on behalf of speakers but, or teachers, but if I was a teacher, I think that, um, you know, accommodations would be very important to me. Um, and I would hope that a student who, you know, like Robbie said, learns best um, being at the front of the class or maybe has, um, you know, a hearing differing ability or something like that, or even just sight, for example, not being able to see um, the screen, you know, I would hope that they would feel comfortable coming to me and letting me know. And regardless if they do that at the beginning of the class or like Robbie suggested at the end, um, you know, I do think that it is important that they do advocate for themselves um, in terms of making sure that they get what they need in order to be successful in the class. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree. If I would, if I were Jackie, I would definitely, like Robbie said, I would definitely at least wait until after class because I don't want to disturb the learning environment. I would possibly just talk to te to my teacher one on one, well, my professor one on one, and say like, "Hey, I don't want to. I learn better once." once I sit in the front, because it helps me concentrate, because we just never know. Maybe Jackie has ADHD. Maybe she has a, another learning disability. Maybe she just needs to sit in the front because she can't see, and otherwise she can't focus. So there's many different factors on um, in this scenario, but everyone's answers were, were great. So great job, everybody. All right, moving on. Scenario two, yay. All right, Maria has a part-time job at a movie theater. Even though her boss knows that she has school, he put her on the schedule to work before 3 p.m. on a weekday. Maria doesn't want to lose her job. How can she advocate for herself and make her boss understand that she can't work those hours, but she still wants to work?
Let's just give everybody a few minutes. This one, this one's a little different because it starts off, it says, the boss knows that she has school. And uh, so it's to the point where like, she needs to make the boss understand that, or let the boss know that she's just not going to be able to make it. So if, so essentially, if he would keep scheduling her on uh, those days on that time, there's nothing that can be done, you know, and, uh, you know, talk about, you know, hopefully getting different hour times, but at the same time, be able to understand that if it's not going to be able to work out, work out because he knows uh, that she has school, well, then you should be okay with stepping away from the job. That's my opinion. All right, good. Mm -hmm. I, I can I can agree with that. Of course, we don't want to uh, try to lose our jobs, but I think the boss was kind of uh, out of line with how he did that. <laughs> but I, I think that um, if she approached him um, and even sympathized or correlated with him in some way, you can kind of put it in a frame where, hey, have you ever been to school? Uh, you know, I major in this. I have these be so many. Um, hours per semester and my workload is quite a bit um i'm not able to work on those days um can you please schedule me on these days or maybe we could um have a compromise somewhere um i think if we talk in that tone or with those talking points we could be more successful and hopefully retain a job but just as uh, cole said um if we can't work it out then we can't work it out right because yeah, school is important because it's as much as the job is important, your education is, I feel, is the most important because it's just like your education prepares you for your career. And so if you need to leave the job because it, it interferes with school, then go right ahead. I've, I've definitely found myself in this situation where I had to leave a job because of school because it's just, school's important, school comes first, because school is basically your job, you're paying for, you're being paid to learn, so, and it's just like, if you need to leave, and that's fine, you can always find another job, get a job on campus, that, that's more, con that's more convenient, in my opinion, as well, so, yeah, this one, <laughs> I could definitely relate to this one, and I, I'm sh pretty sure everyone else can relate to it too. Um, I was gonna say I can I can play a small devil's advocate role. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> not that it means anything, but I, I kind of thought um, from the perspective of like the boss, for example. Um, and again, you know, obviously I would would be um, I would want someone to come to me if they you know, had a conflict and things like that. And I don't know, we it never said whether or not he did it maliciously. Like he may know she has school cause she's a student, but may have forgotten or was trying to fill in someone else's time for missing. So maybe this is just a time to, maybe it more serves as a reminder. Hey, just as a reminder, um, boss, I have class until three. I can come in at, by 3.15 You know, I can be there by 3.15 if you need me, but I, I can't do that. And I think that mm -hmm. is just part of communication and self-advocacy. So I was just looking at it from the lens of, yeah, they may know she has school, but they may have totally forgotten the day or the time, you know, that she actually is going to be in school. So maybe this is just a chance for, you know, Maria to just advocate for herself to say, hey, remember, when you know I gave you my schedule at the beginning of the year, and so that I can't um, you know work at this time, and um, really just reiterating those expectations, because obviously if someone gets hired on and they already know their schedule, then they have every right to advocate and say I'm not available during that time. I don't think anyone should be fired for you know if they've set some expectations early on about their schedule. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, because yeah, this one was like, 
this one was kind of a, a tough one. It's just like, because school is important, but then money. <laughs> but yeah, uh, once again, everyone's answers were on point. So great job, everybody. All right. All right, this is our last scenario, but I'm probably I can do some more scenarios since we have a little bit more time. All right. Um, Jared was late to soccer practice because he had to pick up his little brother. He had to pick up his little brother up from school and walk him home. The coach is angry at Jared that Jared is late. Jared doesn't want to miss out on playing the playing on playing time. How can he advocate for himself in a mature and socially acceptable way? Well, I know from experience, uh, one of the things, you know, from playing sports in high school, uh, one of the things my coach emphasized was communication to where if there is a problem, to just give them a call, you know? And, uh, you know, as long as, even if he didn't, he forgot to call and he still arrived on in practice early, uh, you know, there's always that point where the coach is like, why are you late? In which case, you know, it's one thing to not want to give excuses and just apologize, put your head down and keep going. But you got to understand that uh, a part of taking responsibility is, you know, being able to say, hey, I actually did have a, a good reason for being late. And uh, it doesn't make you disrespectful at all. It's just, you know, it's a part of communication and taking responsibility. All right. Yep, I think Cole hit it right on the head. All right. Yeah, that's, yeah, communication is key to any any relationship. Because without it, well, communication and honesty, I should say, because without those two, there can be no relationship. So even though I definitely agree with, with Cole, like you don't want to make excuses because it's like, hmm, like you've done this before, like, are you trying to make an excuse to get out? Like, no, I have a legitimate reason why I'm late. I, I'm trying to, uh, I had to pick up my brother from school. Cause like, again, you don't really know what this, what Jerry is going through. Maybe his mom is working and she can, um, she didn't have time to pick his little brother up from school. So he had to take the responsibility to do it. So or it could be just him and his brother. There could be no parents involved, so heaven forbid. But you, again, you just never know what this person is going through and just just being able to approach your coach in a respectful and in a respectful manner and saying like, hey, I'm, I'm not trying to make an excuse. I have a legitimate reason why, why I'm late. I had to pick up my brother from school. It's just showing that you are are taking responsibility for your actions, but being a great communicator and of course advocating for yourself and saying like, I'm committed to playing on this team. I've done the, I've done my, the work in my academics. I'm tr keeping my grades up, but even though I, I'm late, I have, a, I had a legitimate reason of being late, but I promise you that this won't happen again. I'll let you, I'll let you know beforehand if I'm going to be late. So just, yeah, communication is key. <laughs> just basically uh, communication is key. You know, Andre, you, you brought up a good point about you don't know the situation and the whole idea of if it is a rough situation, it becomes even harder for you to advocate for yourself because you don't want to, you don't want to feel embarrassed or whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the problem is if it becomes a habit, then your coach is just going to get more upset. And so if it comes a point, uh, you do, you know, in, in each one of these situations, it is like, uh, 
someone talking up to their uh, superior in a way, or whatever the word. I can't find my words today. But authority figure. Yeah, and uh, the it's hard to do that, and it's hard to say to say to like get personal with them and then say here's what's going on at home and you know uh it might you know sometimes i'm just going to be late and it's hard to make that personal connection with them but i also feel like that's where with self-advocacy you can like you can like build respect for you uh within the other person to where you're kind of at a respectful but level playing field to where uh, you're able to speak to them in a mature way. Oh yeah, I, I definitely agree. Anyone else? You want a couple of minutes. All right. Well, this is this is since we have a lot more time, this is the last scenario, but um how how about this? Think of a situation where you had to self-advocate for yourself and tell me how did you how were you able to do it? And just feel feel free to share. And you, you don't have to share if you don't want to. I will say, as I'm thinking, uh, this presentation really has uh, opened my eyes to, uh, you know, the way I've acted in certain situations and the whole idea of, I'm more of a kind of person who would rather stay in the background and keep my head low and, uh, you know, it is what it is, it's not a big deal. I'm one of those types of people. Uh, but I feel in a situation in which uh, I can't really like I can't really adapt to it and I just need to come clean and just, you know, say, hey, uh, this is me. This is the situation I'm in and stand up for myself. And, you know, one thing I can say recently probably is like group projects, really. <laughs> mm -hmm. with something like group projects can be so frustrating to where you just sometimes you just want to say hey okay whatever I'll put my hands up I'll just go with the flow do whatever is easy let's just try to get whatever grade we need to get and be done with it but like it reaches a point where it's like no I need to actually talk up because uh I can't take it anymore. Um, I'll share really quickly one situation that I had like in a previous position. Um, <clears throat> so I had taken off some time to be with my family in Kansas. We were just having like a really big party and um, kind of like a, like a family reunion, but not like a family reunion, <laughs> just like a little <laughs> gathering. And, um, you know, it was really important to me that I actually did have the time off and not, you know, be bothered in case it was an emergency and things like that. And, um, you know, there was a situation where, you know, the, the, per, the you know, the previous colleague, like, asked me for something and I, I couldn't get back to them in a timely manner because I was doing something with the family and, you know, they kind of got upset, you know, that I hadn't gotten back to them in a timely manner. So the way in which I advocated for myself was just reminding them that like, you know, I had a vacation day and this was really important to me. My family's really important to me. And, you know, I did not view it as an emergency. So 
just trying to, you know, reiterate the expectations and really my understanding of, you know, what a vacation day truly is. Because I think sometimes we get to these points where, and we all do this, right, where either, you know, the professor is out of the office and we're still emailing them or texting them for things and they're, they're not available, but we still feel like that they need to be, even if it's not like an emergency. So I just think that's something to think about, like as you're like in your student organizations or, you know, if you need something from someone, just trying to be respectful as well. I think that's a big thing of reason why people have to self-advocate for themselves because of the lack of respect for their time um, or their, their space. And so I just wanted to share that because after that, I think the co the ex colleague knew like, oh yeah, that could have waited. But I feel like if I had not said anything, like who knows, it could have like happened again, you know, in that role. So, right. I I can't think of one. It's so funny when you try to think of a particular um, scenario of what we're talking about. I can't think of one, but it's funny because you'll go through it. But when I think of one or try to think of one, I can't think of one. But I think those are all great examples that Karen and uh, Cole gave us. Yeah, they, they really are. And I, I can share real quick as well. So um, there have been so many instances where I <laughs> needed, to, I could have self-advocated for myself. And like you, Cole, I'm the type of person, like, I just want to stay in the background. I'd rather be, <laughs> not not seen and things like that so um this happened recently as well so i'm doing my uh psychology practicum at the st louis queer helpline it's this um, lgbtq helpline where they offer um peer support counseling and so i'm I've, i'm given daily tasks and the different tasks that i'm i'm doing where right now we're doing um recruitment for new helpline volunteers. So I'm sitting in on interviews, I'm researching, I'm doing community outreach projects. So I'm um, attending different um, community events and I am reaching out to different organizations that we can present uh, to and possibly partner with. So throughout the semester, I kept on taking on different tasks and trying to uh, just do as much tasks as possible. And that to the point where I ended up overwhelming myself. I ended up getting stressed out because I had too many tasks to do because um, from like previous experience, I was, I could go back like in high school. I didn't, I wasn't really involved in high school. So um, I had a bad case of FOMO. <laughs> so uh, I kept on saying yes to this, yes to that, yes to this, yes to that to the point where, like I said, I was overwhelming myself. And so I was like, I had to tell myself, hey, you can't keep on taking these tasks and, um, or my supervisor, my uh, task supervisor was assigning me a lot more tasks than, than usual. So I had, I had to tell myself, hey, you can't keep on taking these tasks. You have like your academics and you have your other priorities that that you need to do so I went to my task supervisor and I told him like hey I can't I I'm not I can't do all these tasks and I need to just break it down I need to do one at a time because if I because I keep if I keep on saying yes to all these tasks I'm gonna get overwhelmed I'm getting stressed out and I'm not gonna be as productive and another instance um with uh pre presenting so I was assigned to be a community presenter. So I basically, I present on what the organization is and we talk about what our mission statement is and, and other things like that. So I personally, I'm not good at presenting. I get super nervous. And so I told, once again, I told my supervisor like, hey, I'm not comfortable with presenting. I'd rather just engage with the audience, maybe, um, tell my story of how, um, of how I, why I joined Scritch or tell my story of, uh, of my identity, of my identities and things like that. And just answer questions or participate in the peer review activity or maybe just read a couple of slides, but I'm not comfortable with presenting by myself. And so 
um, my supervisor said, okay, I mean, that's, that's good enough for me. That is totally understandable. Your, your uh, mental well-being, your mental health comes first. So thank you for telling me. And so those situations um, was one way that I was able to self-advocate for myself. Just telling, just telling my supervisor what, um, what I need and they listened and we discussed it and we were able to make um, accommodations for, for me. So that's my story. All right, let's see what time is it. We still have a few minutes. All right, so some tips and tricks. <laughs> um, so the first tip is, of course, believe in yourself because if you don't believe in yourself, who is gonna be believe in you? It's always good to um, believe in yourself that you can be able to advocate for yourself and be able to speak up and say what you want because it's it's your respons responsibility to speak up because if you see something that you that you don't agree with or that you want to change you you need to speak up Th then other if you don't speak up otherwise it won't change won't happen so and of course know your rights um every born entitled to our rights and um and things like that and also decide what you want um decide what's most important to you and um, it's always good to get get information on what you're advocating, what you're self-advocating for. And um, next is have a planning strategy. It's always good to be prepared when you self-advocate for yourself because it's just like, it sh shows that you're organized. It shows that you're taking responsibility. So it's always good to have a strategy and gather support. Like sometimes, um, self-advocacy, sometimes you need a little bit of encouragement in order to self-advocate for yourself. So gather support from family and friends and um, tell them what you're advocating for and um, gather the support that you need and express and assert yourself clearly. It's always good to, um, to express, express yourself in, in a of course, a respectful manner. Um, always, it's always good to be assertive, not like passive or passive aggressive, because otherwise you won't get anywhere. So um, always express yourself assertively and, and clearly. And the last, last one is um, be firm and persistent, because this is, you're advocating for what you want. This is, this is about about you and what you need and of course it goes back to the three parts of self of self advocacy knowing knowing yourself knowing what you want knowing knowing what <laughs> i'm sorry knowing yourself knowing what you need and knowing how to get what you want so be firm and persistent don't be afraid to express your opinion and not everybody's going to agree on what you say but it's always good to express what you want in a respectful manner, but don't let anybody w walk all over you because that's not going to get you anywhere. Always be a service, always be assertive and be firm and persistent. And with that, my last tip is that, and above all, your voice matters. <laughs> you, your voice matters, your opinion matters. So it's always good to um, self-advocate in any situation because your voice matters and, and you matter. So, all right, um, that's about it. Uh, thank you everyone for coming. And um, I really enjoyed our discussion in the session. So this is my contact information. So feel free to contact me with about anything. If, I mean, if you just wanna talk, if you wanna talk about ideas, for other leadership series just you know here's my uh phone number and email address so thank you all so much awesome thanks andre so i'm gonna Good stop job. the recording